Are you looking for the best daily driver? Something that checks all boxes? Something that's smooth, reliable, fun, and good on fuel economy? Over the past years, I've owned over 25 vehicles, and I can tell you without a doubt, the 2011 335D is by far the best daily driver for me. This is actually a picture of the first day that I owned this vehicle. Right now, I've roughly owned it for two and a half years. In this video, I'll be able to go over the pros and cons of owning a 335D. Although there are not very many cons, there are some things to watch out for, and I will go over them. The pros. Let's start out with the fuel economy. If your vehicle is stock, you can expect to get something like 28 mixed and up to 36 on the freeway. Now, if you're deleted, that opens up a new ball game. You're looking at 33, 35 mixed and roughly 40 to 50 on the freeway. The second pro I'm going to speak about is the acceleration. A stock 335D can do 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds, while a deleted 335D can do 0 to 60 in 3.9 to 4.3 seconds, depending on your tune. Tuning this platform is rather easy, as it is mostly just flash tuning. Doing a basic delete on one of these BMWs can net you nearly 100 wheel torque. It'll only cost roughly 2 to 3 grand. Next pro is that they're comfortable. First things first, this is just a 3 series, it's not a 7 series or anything luxurious like that. I've had much more comfortable cars than this and cars that have better seats. But for a 3 series, this is a rather comfortable sports car. Now, when it comes to the seats, I would rather have the sports seats as they are much more comfortable, but the stock base seats... They're all right. They're not the best, but they can get the job done. The rear seats aren't the best, but honestly, this is a driver's car, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But if I was stuck in the rear seats for more than an hour, I probably wouldn't be too happy. Although if your E90 came equipped with the cold weather package, you do get a heated steering wheel, which became honestly my most underrated feature that I thought I would never use. Overall, the interior of these cars is very well built. The road noise, you barely hear it. You don't hear anything, and it is a nice, smooth ride. Last but not least, how can you not talk about the E90's handling? It is amazing. It is the last hydraulic rack that BMW decided to make, and on top of it is just a very heavy feeling, and you feel so connected to the road that you have the most confidence going into any corner, especially with some grippy tires. Now on to the cons, which, well, I think are minor. First off, it's going to be the EPA and emissions issues. The motors on these cars basically have emission restrictions, and they do not perform very well with them. Now, when you do delete them, they solve a lot of those problems. Some of the problems can occur with the intake manifold and the whole motor just getting gunked up with soot no, from the God. diesel, and that is no, not God, very healthy please, for the no, motor. No. So if you have a car that has roughly no! around 100,000 miles, you're going to want to take it in for a cleaning or at least verify that it is clean on the inside before any performance mods. Now, I'm not saying that you need to delete your car, but I'm just telling you what the issues are. The DPF sometimes seems to fail. The SCR seems to fail sometimes. The EGR, it's all issues when it comes to this car. Now, if they're all deleted... This thing runs smooth, and this motor is amazing. It'll run forever. The motor is an N57 diesel inline-six twin-turbo, arguably one of the best motors BMW has ever made. The last con I'm going to talk about is going to be the cost of parts. The cost of parts for a car this age is slightly above average. I would say it is definitely on the higher end, but nothing too crazy. If you're buying parts, I would suggest you order from FCP Euro, as they have a lifetime guarantee warranty. Now, you can even replace your oil, gaskets, bushings, you name it, they'll replace it. No questions asked. Something that you're going to want to make sure has been replaced is the harmonic balancer. The harmonic balancer from factory is a failed design and the center tends to get brittle over time and you need to replace it. The worst thing about this is you don't know when your harmonic balancer is actually going to go out. It can go out at 60,000 miles 
50,000 miles, 140,000 miles, even 180,000 miles. There's no telltale way. The only way you'll know if your harmonic balancer is going out is if you get a really nasty burning plastic smell. Next thing you may need to replace at times is going to be injectors. They're going to run you roughly about $300 to $350 each. I would highly recommend buying them from SCP Euro for the lifetime guarantee. And also, I would highly recommend running this Hot Shots as it will keep your motor clean and all your injectors firing properly. Not only that, it will also improve your fuel economy and keep your diesel running longer. Last but not least, only buy the Bosch injectors. Another hiccup could be the turbo lines. Some of the turbo oil lines tend to fail at times and some of them are actually very hard to reach. So if you buy one and the turbo lines are already repaired, that's great. Overall, these can be a very reliable car just as long as they are well taken care of. Now, maintenance is key on most BMWs. Just like any other car, take care of it and it'll take care of you. Now the issues lie within this car on the emission side. When it comes to the EGR, the DPF, the CAT, the DEF, all that emission stuff kind of hinders this vehicle quite a bit. So when the, the DPF and the CAT tend to get clogged, most people end up deleting these cars, tuning it out, and that's where you gain a lot of power. Also, they've been deleting the DEF, and they some people have been putting meth back there. That's a pretty solid option if you're looking to go fast. In just over two years of owning this car, the only items that have broken on me would be the harmonic balancer, looking at about 350 bucks, and one injector that was throwing a code that was about $350. Now keep in mind you're going to have to budget for some specific tools to work on this car. Sometimes they have different bolts and fasteners that you need specific tools. Like for instance when I had to pull my injector I had to buy a $50 injector puller off eBay. And then in order to code that injector I had to buy a Beamer Geek ECU adapter. I also had to replace the rotors and pads, but I would also just consider that basic maintenance. That was roughly about $500. So overall, I've been really enjoying this vehicle for the past two and a half years that I've owned it. If you have roughly a budget of, uh, I don't know, 10 grand and you're a car guy, this is definitely a vehicle that I would recommend buying. I wouldn't recommend buying this vehicle if you don't have a great mechanic or you yourself do not work on cars. It's not prone to breaking down, but you'd want to make sure that this car is maintained and fully healthy at all times. Overall, just get yourself behind the seat of one and feel the torque. It's very different from any other car that I've driven, and honestly, the road feel is great on these E90s. To close it up, I'm going to ask a big favor to check out the links that I have in the description. Those are honestly my top products that have took me over two years to figure out what works best on car detailing. You'll be truly amazed with some of those products. Last and foremost, like, comment, and subscribe. Support your channel. I'll see you guys later.